today we're just up and we're in a hotel room. Yeah. Hi, I'm Chris. This is Kevin of Stories. We're comparing Kenyan and American culture to see what's different, but also what's similar. So, in my work as a musician, I sometimes get to travel and to do different gigs in different places. So today, we are in the northwest corner of New Jersey, where a Jewish center has hired me to play the piano for their high holidays. Yeah, so this is a very special time in the Jewish calendar. Uh, this is the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. That's what we're celebrating. Mm -hmm. uh, well, tonight, once the sun goes down, starts the first day of Rosh Hashanah. And, um, and the next week will be Yom Kippur. And that's the high holidays. So, um, Grace has asked to sit down with the rabbi and talk a little bit about Judaism and mm -hmm. what it means to be Jewish here in America and, and things like that. Questions that, that uh, you know, you might have, especially Kenyans probably have, uh, since there aren't uh, a lot of... I wonder if that light is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shut it off. Grace, you came with me last time, which was two years ago, to do this. What was your impression then? Um, well, I didn't know what was going on, but there was a lot of music that sounded like hymns to me, you know. But it was a long service, oh my god, like two hours. It reminded me of an Easter service in, back in Nairobi. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the services can be long. I think uh, two years ago, the rabbi kind of overplanned. I think he, there was a lot he wanted to do. This year, we're still in COVID times. The, the service has been pared down a bit. And most of the congregation will be tuning in via Zoom. So people aren't actually going to be in the room uh, with us necessarily. But there will be some of them. Yeah. So, um, so I guess we'll see how it goes. We have service tonight. We have service tomorrow. And then... Uh, for the second morning, uh, they would normally have a service the second morning, but because they're Zooming, um, they're just going to have a small gathering and no music. Well, not me at least, so. Mm. Yeah, say two, three, go. <laughs> uh, action. <laughs> All right, hi, I'm Grace today. I'm not with Kevin. <laughs> I'm with Rabbi Andy and still comparing mm. Kenyan and American cultures to see what's different but also what's similar. So today we are in a synagogue and um, I have a few questions for our rabbi here. And as you know, I'll just jump into it. Um, so for me growing up in Kenya, I wasn't really exposed to Judaism until I moved to London, where I lived for nine years. And then here in New York, you know, um, I remember being on a bus in gorgeous green and mm -hmm. seeing people dress differently, something that I've never seen before. So, and we're very honored to have you on our show today. So in a nutshell, can you explain to us what Judaism is all about? <laughs> what is Judaism in one sentence? Um, <laughs> yeah. Judaism, well, obviously, uh, you're probably familiar that uh, Judaism was the first of the three Abrahamic religions, mm -hmm. meaning out of Judaism came Christianity yes. and then came Islam. Mm -hmm. um, so we would be the, I guess, the parent religion of yes. the other two. Um, so we share a number of things mm -hmm. that way. Uh, but I think if I have to really think, what is Judaism in a nutshell? There are maybe two or three, say two big ways of looking at it. Number one is that we are a religion. Mm -hmm. We are a set of uh, practices and beliefs, um, you know, like Christianity, like Islam. We are monotheistic. We mm -hmm. pray to one single God. Right. Um, but then a different way of looking at it, um, not that the first part would be untrue, but that uh, Judaism, I think more than Christianity, mm -hmm 
we think of ourselves as a people. We mm -hmm. think of ourselves as a worldwide community, mm -hmm. as one family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, when a Jew in Kenya is suffering, the Jew in New York feels the pain. Oh. As a people, we have stuck together because we are, I think, a miracle people and that we are a tiny portion of the world mm -hmm. and somehow we're still here. Um, it's been a, uh, a whole history, a 3,000 year history of challenges that mm -hmm. somehow we've overcome and some Jews uh, give the thanks to God for bringing us through miraculously. Some other Jews uh, give thanks to uh, the strength of our communal bond that we bring ourselves through. Um, so I guess also a difference between Judaism and Christianity. Christianity, as I understand it, um, requires faith in Jesus Christ. That if... If I can say with all my heart and soul that I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. I am a Christian. Judaism does not have the same kind of requirements. We, it is, we certainly have beliefs, mm -hmm. but to be a Jew is more about our actions mm -hmm. than our beliefs. It is possible to be a Jew who maybe doesn't even believe in God. Oh. Um, if we are, if we feel ourselves part of the people. Right. Oh, interesting. So. That's a, an interesting perspective. And so for me, being an Anglican, whenever we have service on Sunday, we are always praying for Israel. And, you know, and I, growing up, I really didn't know the distinction between Israel as a, you know, the chosen ones. I think that's what it's mm -hmm. referred to. And Israel as a country. So I'm always like, what are we praying for? Israel as a country or the chosen ones? And also, like, uh, we're made to believe that, you know, once you're born again, accept Jesus, then you are an Israelite, you know, like oh. the chosen ones. Okay. And I know now that there's a distinction between that. If maybe you wanted to <laughs> clarify that. There are two different ways of looking at being the chosen people. Yeah. Um, we could say that God chose the people of Israel mm -hmm for a special mission in this world, mm. uh, which is to be a light unto nations, to lead by example. Right. Um, and then there a kind of an opposite way of looking at it, rather than thinking of ourselves as the chosen ones. Mm -hmm. um, some people talk about, we are the ones who chose, mm. that we have chosen to take on this particular mission mm. um, and to accept God's guidance in that mission. Right. Um, I will tell you that there are some Jews, um, you're talking about denominations of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. In Judaism, we have denominations oh. too. Okay. Not nearly the number <laughs> of denominations you have. Yeah. Um, they're really, I would say, four basic denominations. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. There is um, what I am, which is Reformed Jewish, oh, okay. which is... Um, I would say a more liberal understanding of our relationship with tradition mm -hmm. um, and the legal aspects of what are required of us, mm -hmm. the Jewish legal aspects, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, we, we uh, give more, I guess, credence to autonomy, to, to people making their own decisions, mm -hmm. guided by tradition. There is um, Orthodox Judaism, mm -hmm. which um, has a very strict adherence to traditional understandings mm -hmm. of how to live a Jewish life. <clears throat> there is uh, Conservative Judaism, which, um, like Orthodox Judaism, it does accept that we are required to do certain things in legal Jewish tradition, but the definition of what that can be is much wider than it is in orthodoxy. And then the fourth one, um, the newest of the four major denominations is called Reconstructionist. Okay. And the reason I bring that up mm -hmm. is because in Reconstructionist Judaism, 
um, that denomination rejects the idea that we are the chosen people. Oh. Um, the Reconstructionists have a way of practicing Judaism where they are very uh, loyal mm -hmm. to tradition, mm -hmm. but they think that the tradition is the peoplehood, not the God relationship, but it's the peoplehood of Judaism that truly brings us together. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, Reconstructionist Judaism has an iffy relationship with God. That, oh, that God, that some Reconstructionist uh, congregations take God all out of it wow. and say, we should just follow tradition because it has worked for 3,000 years. That is very interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> now you know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, attending the service here, this is my second time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I felt very welcome in the <coughs> congregation. And I just wanted to know, like, other opportunities, like in Christianity, we're always told, uh, be a disciple, try and convert people, you know, into Christianity. Are there such opportunities or things in um, yes. Judaism? Yes, Judaism... Um, absolutely, we welcome anyone who wants to be part of us, mm -hmm. um, but it's different from Christianity mm -hmm. in that we do not seek converts. Mm -hmm. We welcome converts if they come to us, but we do not seek them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm not sure how it works in your church, but mm -hmm. in order to convert into Judaism, uh, we require study oh, okay. and we require, um, depending on exactly who is going to be the rabbi in charge of the process. Mm -hmm. But when I do it, I require the potential convert to live a full year Jewishly yeah. um, before, uh, before the conversion becomes official. Oh. Um, because we want you to know what you're getting into. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, when we talk about conversion, we don't talk um, about someone actually who is becoming Jewish. We think about it in a sense more mystically. Mm -hmm. And we talk about someone who is returning to Judaism because we right. say that anyone who becomes part of our people, clearly they were at Mount Sinai when Moses brought down the Ten Commandments mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and over the generations have gone, gone a separate <laughs> way and now they are returning. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so once you become Jewish this way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it would be improper in the future for anyone to ask whether right. you were a convert or not, that you are a Jew. That makes sense. And how long would this conversion take place? You, about a year. Oh, okay. Those maybe oh, that, six years. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's usually about one year. Um, and it concludes with a special ceremony. Oh. Um, also, to conclude, um, one of my favorite, I don't know if it's a ceremony or uh, things I've seen uh, Jewish people do at this uh, bar, mitzvahs. bar mitzvah. I saw that in London. I was like, why? Why don't we have this as, you know, Christian? I should be celebrating for turning 16. Is it 16 or? It's 13. 13, for turning 13 in that way, you know. In Judaism, actually not unlike in Islam, mm. um, there is a special coming of age recognition oh. when you are 13, oh. um, where you graduate from being a child of the community to being an adult in the community. And we know that a 13 year old today is not an adult. <laughs> But in religious understanding, yeah. um, I guess the most practical way to think about it is that to have a full Jewish service, mm. we are required to have what's called a minyan. A minyan mm. is Hebrew for a group of 10 Jews praying together mm. to have a full prayer service because we, <clears throat> we recognize that without community, we are nowhere. Um, and so after bar mitzvah, or for a girl, it's bat mitzvah. Oh, okay. uh, so bar mitzvah means a son of the commandments. Oh. For a bat mitzvah, a daughter of the commandments. Mm -hmm. um, and then these days we are now thinking of all other kinds of ways about it. For people who are non-binary, don't 
don't associate right. with one sex or the other. Yeah. Um, we've come up with new names as well because oh. we want to be inclusive yes. of everyone. Sense, yeah. um, but once they have gone through that, they then are an adult and they are counted as one of those 10 in oh, a prayer okay. service. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say also, bar mitzvah in America anyway, it has come to be thought of as an event like mm. where someone gets bar mitzvahed, mm -hmm. um, a verb, I guess, and it's not a verb. It okay. is bar mitzvah actually refers to the person, not to the verb, not to the process that right. I become a bar mitzvah. I become I a son of the commandment. Um, and if we think about it that way, it takes some of the focus off where rabbis don't really love that focus has gone so much to the parties and less to the religious side. The parties are good though. The parties <laughs> are good. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, but. So there you go. Yeah. I've learned so much about, you know, um, Judaism, things I never knew about and I hope so many people watching our channel are going to learn the same. We've been on a whirlwind. Uh, you may have seen our last episode, which was our trip to. Uh, Atlantic City. Thanks. I feel like <laughs> I haven't slept. Yeah, our trip to Atlantic City, because I had a gig there as well. Um, with very different, very different thing. Uh, so we're on a little bit of a trip. We'll be back in New York City soon. Um, although you'll be seeing the videos spread out a little more because we post one video a week at this point. Well, if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share this video with all your friends. And that's it for now. Goodbye. Quaheri. Shalom. <laughs> While others may be rich of pocket, we are rich of heart.